In this edition of City News, we'll show you a new capital improvement project underway and find out why one Hawthorne sailor was recognized overseas. Also, we'll show you why more than 30 classic cars made a pit stop at City Hall. These stories and much more coming up on City News. Hello and welcome to City News. I'm Zarina Carzada. Rain, water runoff, and debris. With outdated storm drains, city streets risk the chance of flooding. And as the city continues to grow, officials say those storm drains need updating. Jennifer Murillo tells us more. City officials gathered for the groundbreaking of the storm drain improvements and installation of infiltration chambers on Hawthorne Boulevard. This particular project captures 120,000 gallons of rainwater per each 24-hour storm event which then ultimately reaches the groundwater aquifer. It's a system that's going to be able to recycle water, which is good for all of Hawthorne. Uh, I think it's a sample that could be used for other cities and communities. This $1.6 million project includes installation of infiltration center islands and deep drywalls with additional storm drain pipelines and catch basins. It's a benefit all around. Um, yes, there'll be a little bit of congestion because of the traffic and the construction, but with this new infrastructure, the will, our sewer system won't get clogged up. The storm drains will have more room to siphon out trash and everything as well. Limits of the work are El Segundo Boulevard on the south and 120th Street on the north. It will also include completely reconfigured center islands in anticipation of the new mixed-use project at the old Hawthorne Plaza. We got some special grants for this project, which means that we didn't go to the budget, so it's going to help out our budget. Funds for the projects came from Proposition 84 and Proposition C. So we have a public works department that's able to go out and get grants, <laughs> compete against other cities and succeed in winning over the other cities and getting the grants. It is also necessary to mention that construction of infiltration chambers of this magnitude in public right-of-way is very unique, at least in the greater South Bay region. You can't find any other example of this sort of projects in public right-of-way. Our public works department has always been in the forefront of making certain that the city meets its regulatory requirements and uh, continues to stay in the forefront of building the structural infrastructure to protect the city. So I'm very proud of that. I'm very proud of all of the people who have worked on this. In the past 11 years, Hawthorne has invested $60 million in capital improvement projects. For HCTV, I'm Jennifer Murillo. Interim City Manager Arnold Shadbear says the storm drains reconstruction will take about six months to be completed. Neighbors took a drive down memory lane with Hawthorne Historical Society's Good Neighbors Day. Patrons experienced a first-hand view of more than 30 classic cars from almost every decade, live music, food, and a final tour of the police jail quarters. It's a day that really brings people together. Uh, out of the house, you know, you do your laundries and things on a Saturday, but today's the day you come out and you relax. For more on the event and an inside look into the jail tour, keep an eye out for our Good Neighbors Day special on HCTV. Year-round, our Navy sailors are out of sight, protecting our country overseas missing holidays, weekends, and time with family. But those sacrifices come with their own rewards. One Hawthorne sailor was recognized for his fine-tuned work ethic. In the sky or out at sea, these Navy sailors stay prepared for anything they come up against. If you mess up once, you can have serious repercussions. That mentality and work ethic is why Navy aviation electrician's mate Francis Trujillo, known as Alex by his family, was named plane captain of the quarter on the USS John C. Stennis. His keen eye inspecting jets for any electrical issues safely launched more than 150 from the flight deck. I, was, uh, I wasn't really expecting it every day. I just come in and do, do everything that, that's asked and, you know, a little bit more just to keep up. Word of his achievement made it back to his family in Hawthorne, California. And they say the good news makes their time apart a little easier. I really could, can't tell you how proud I am and continue to be proud of him. 
he's come a long way and to adapt to us and just the American culture and to succeed is just great. Trujillo lived with his mother in the small country of Belize until his 14th birthday. By then, his dad made the move to bring him to the U.S. and enrolled him into the Hawthorne Math and Science Academy, where he graduated and then joined the Navy. Talk about like where he is and like how it's different from where we grew up. Because like he's going new places and like we see the vision and the journey through him. Even when overseas, Trujillo keeps his family close through Facebook, phone calls, and texts. In the two years he has been on board, he already received a few awards. Last December, he received his first medal, and the first thing he did was give it to his biggest supporter. To receive his first award was the recognition that he's giving to me. It was like, okay, Dad, this is for you. You know, you played a big part in, in me and where I am now. While dad was reminded of his hard work paying off, one sibling says his brother opened a door of possibilities for his own future. After school, I'm trying to major in illustration, uh, graduate from college, either that or, you know, become a pararescue man in the Air Force and uh, pretty much help out. Same thing he's doing because, you know, he did inspire me to do that. Trujillo's family says their time apart is an adjustment they make every day. But hearing about his success is what keeps them strong. I was already happy that I got it in the first place. And knowing that they were proud of it made me even more accomplished. I know he's on the right path and uh, he's a brilliant young man and I can see his life being as positive as I see now. Airman Trujillo and Jonathan will be reunited for a one-week trip in August aboard the USS John C. Stennis. Jonathan will get a first-hand view of what his brother does every day. From the ordinary to the extraordinary, those with the green thumb got a chance to take an up-close and personal look at rare and hard-to-find plants to take home. The South Bay Begonia Society held its annual fundraiser at Da Vinci High School, where plants for the Begonia sale were donated by members. It's not only a fun experience doing your hobby with gardening, it's also a learning experience because you learn about different plants. You'll probably see pl a plant, at least a few plants that you've never seen before. Service President Martin Delgado says the fundraiser brings in more than $800 for the club every year. If this story gave you the itch for a green thumb, the next Begonia plant show and sale will be September 10th at the Ayers Hotel in Hawthorne from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Coming up next on City News, find out how one workshop keeps children alert from predators. Also, students get a jump start in the right direction. There's more news ahead. We'll be right back. Welcome back. Sexual assault can happen to anyone, and when it involves children, it can impact their future outlook on family, friends, and significant others. To bring awareness and prevent sexual abuse in children, families came to the Funship Children's Center to learn how to stay vigilant. Jennifer Murillo tells us more. The organization Resolve to Rise invited the entire community to come out and learn about sexual assault and bring awareness to children about the right way to be touched. This right here is a little girl. You see the little swimsuit right there? Okay. That's called the, pri the swimsuit area. It's a little private area okay, that no one should touch. It's about making sure that the kids are safe and our community is safe and, and are able to defend themselves and, and prevent sexual assault. Close to 50 children were in attendance as director and founder of Resolve to Rise, Yolanda Dunn read to the children the book titled The Right Touch. What's a touching problem, he asked. Today I learned that nobody has to touch your private parts and you have to tell somebody that somebody was touching your private part. You should always tell somebody you trust, two people. And say, I don't like that. I don't like that. It's important because if they don't, if they're not able to identify what is wrong and right touch, how could they go out and tell someone that someone violated them or touched them inappropriately? I like that because it tells you a lot of information about what to do if somebody touch your private parts. According to statistics from Resolve to Rise, more than 20% of children are sexually abused before the age of eight as well as one in four girls and one in six boys before the age of 18. Little kids should be coming to this because when, when they tell you, it, when you're a little kid, they will remember when they grow 
like to a teenager, a big kid, or adult, and they'll know. I'm a survivor of sexual abuse myself, and I never was informed of a right touch or a bad touch. And until I, it wasn't until I was 29 year, years old when I actually broke out and, and spoke for the first time about my abuse. I, it, it brought so much shame to me that if we can teach the kids about their, their personal space, we can help them, we can help prevent them experiencing years of agony and emotional and psychological trauma. The workshop included special guests, Officer Lamika Bell and Scotty, the police canine, who reminded children to call 911 in case of an emergency. Nobody has a right to touch you here. These the are your private brother? parts. It belongs to you. The children also received many freebies thanks to contributions made from various people, including city officials. Dunn asked that if you suspect sexual abuse, call the police immediately to get the help you need. For HCTV, I'm Jennifer Murillo. To learn more about the organization, go to www.resolvetorise.org. Students get hands-on with future career plans. Kathleen Mendoza tells us about one program that gives students a guiding hand into the world of science, technology, engineering, and math. Students from Zella Davis Elementary School demonstrated their knowledge and creative skills at the Summer Engineering Experience for Kids program, also known as SEEK, a program where students work together and compete against other students of the same grade level. We're very fortunate to partner up with the National Society of Black Engineers. This is our second year, and so it's a STEM hands-on program, which aligns perfectly with our STEM program. And every week on Fridays, the students in, um, participate in challenge activities, and they actually have a competition. These competitions include artistic design, where students explain why they made their product and how it could be used in the future, oral presentation, where they perform their challenges through a skit, and toy competition, where they compete with other students on which product aligned closest to the defined parameters provided. Not everybody has access to this, so when you are involved in the program, it allows them to take advantage of it, and I guess just see other people, like we're having fun, but we're also learning. The level of energy students show on the playground can also be seen in the classrooms as they prepare for their future careers. This three-week program allows students to work alongside engineers, architects, and doctors while also introducing them to leadership-type roles that cater to STEM education, which stands for science, technology, engineering, and mathematics, where students gain the skills required to succeed. At the end of our mission statement, it's to increase their interest in pursuing career, pro, um, careers in STEM. In addition to seek mentors, Hawthorne Math and Science Academy came out to volunteer. So far, I like that uh, the kids are easy to work with, some of them at least, but I like working with kids. Seek students were far from shy to express their interest in this program. I think it's important to learn about everything in life when you have the chance. Since this technology is ruling over the future and it's about science, engineering, and science is a technology is a type of science, it's a very good for them to know for like life skills. Sponsors like Northrop Grumman and National Society of Black Engineers helped make this program possible. Site director Tolulape Pabaloba hopes to continue building the next generation to be more interested in STEM. For HCTV, I'm Kathleen Mendoza. For more information on the STEM program and National Society of Black Engineers, visit www.nsbe.org. Losing a home and having nowhere to go is difficult for anyone. To help people get back on their feet and a roof over their heads, one organization comes in with open arms. Jennifer Murillo tells us more. While some homeless may not want the help, others may, but don't know where to find it. The organization's path has come into the city to try to help as many individuals and families as they can and get them the help they need. According to the South Bay Coalition to End Homelessness, as of January 27, 2016, Hawthorne has 100 homeless that were found in nearly all parts of the city. Our mission is to end homelessness for individuals, veterans, and families, and we do that by essentially providing permanent housing to, to individuals who are experiencing homelessness. PATH, a nonprofit organization of people assisting the homeless, began to execute their outreach here in the city as of February 18th. They have also been partnering with the Hawthorne Police Department 
city council, and city staff to help end this issue. What we try to do is go and contact them in the field, get their names, if they have a phone, get their phone numbers, and then we contact PATH or St. Margaret's to try to get them linked up to their social security services, their IDs and whatnot. Our goal is to help people achieve permanent housing and that can take time and repeated engagement, case management, continuing to go out and, and really work with people wherever they are in the city of Hawthorne to help them uh, you know, move off the streets and into their own homes. An outreach team from PATH goes out to meet people where they are to offer them assistance. If someone says, you know, I'm not ready to accept services today, uh, we'll say, well, you know, here's our card, here's a hygiene kit and, a, um, and a, you know, a granola bar water bottle. Um, give us a call when you're ready and then we'll come back again the next week. I think it's just building a relationship. You got to continually talk to them. At first, they're going to come off standoffish because they don't want to deal with officers. But the more you deal with them and get to know them, then they start opening up. The census also collected information on neighboring cities, which determined that there were 3,600 homeless people living in the South Bay. We're fortunate enough to get a regional contract with the County of Los Angeles to provide homeless services in the South Bay City's Council of Governments region, um, which includes the city of Hawthorne. Since we've started this, we have multiple success stories. PATH hopes to help at least 450 individuals in any way possible. For HCTV, I'm Jennifer Murillo. If you would like to make a contribution to PATH, contact Meredith Berkson at meredithb at epath.org. Coming up next on City News, find out why golfers tee off for Hawthorne schools. In any sport, you have to find the sweet spot to get an edge over the competition. Athletes kept their eye on the ball with this year's summer volleyball clinic at the Betty Ainsworth Sports Center. Tony Long Jr. tells us more. The City of Hawthorne Recreation and Community Services Department held their Ready, Set, Serve intro into volleyball clinic, which featured enthusiastic coaches who love to work with children. Most fun is actually seeing the kids improve, uh, seeing them kind of work hard, face challenges and get better. They bring a lot of energy, so they keep you young. Uh, there's always something different. All the, every kid has their own personality. So when you get to meet all these series of kids, you get to work with all kinds of kids. You learn how to manage kids differently. Parents are grateful for the variety of sports clinics their child could participate in, including volleyball. I'm grateful that the city puts on these type of clinics so that the kids can trial um, different sports, not only volleyball, but other different sports. They can come in here, they learn the, uh, the basics, the fundamentals of the sport. For many of the children, this was their first exposure to volleyball. Uh, I started out playing softball, but I wanted to try something new, so I started playing volleyball. I like when we practice passing with partners because that makes us focus and it also controls the ball. Attendees also said, this class sparked their interest in playing volleyball in the future. For HCTV, I'm Tony Law Jr. For more information on clinics and other classes, contact the Hawthorne Recreation and Community Services Department at 310-349-1640. Teachers, staff, family and friends of Hawthorne School District teed off a good time to give back at the Hawthorne Education Foundation Golf Tournament at Chester Washington Golf Course. Jennifer Murillo has more. The 12th annual Hawthorne Education Foundation Golf Tournament brought 104 golfers out to a day on the green. It is a way to generate funds for our Ed Foundation, which, which supports projects that happen in our schools. Um, and this is just probably the most fun event that we have all year. We want to give them something to really like have fun with. And so why not with what they really like, golf? We're just out here trying to have some fun and support the uh, school district. Uh, you know, trying to help out, sponsoring, so that we could make events like this happen and support the, the community. Uh, I don't really know any of these people, but it's nice to know that there are people out there that care. The funds raised are used to support the district through the Teacher and School Grant Program. This program supports classrooms and other programs that quite don't get funded by the state. Some years we have teachers write grants for uh, projects that they might want us to fund. Some years we use the foundation funds to do things like um, purchase um, outfits for the chorus. They've really been really helpful with my school and like 
they've been giving a lot to us, and so I think it's really nice that people are realizing that and that they're coming to help. It feels great, actually, um, knowing that people actually care about our district. Well, I believe that uh, education is a big part, you know, and, and I believe that uh, if everybody would help out, we'll make the education stronger. And that's mainly what we are here for, to support the community. While everyone is there to support the district, it is a tournament and prizes are on the line. Our winners will get uh, $50 gift cards to Plaza Golf. Our second place teams will get gift certificates to different golf courses so they can participate in a foursome. So we try to spread it around a little bit. The tournament concludes with a dinner to announce the winners and where more prizes can be won. And we also have a silent auction and the Los Angeles Angels have donated, the Clippers, the Lakers, memorabilia such as autographed hats, autographed baseballs, autographed mini helmets, and we also have tickets. So we have a lot of different gifts uh, available. Dr. Helen Morgan used this time to also recognize someone who had been an instrumental part of this tournament since its inception. Steve's a humble man and he planned to slip into retirement just as quietly as he entered the Hawthorne School District 37 years ago. And before that, as a kindergarten student, he could live to school. <laughs> Sorry, Steve, you can't let that happen. Tonight, Steve will be announcing the awards for the final Hawthorne Education Foundation tournament. But you are all invited back next year to play in the Steve Tabor Golf Classic, benefiting the Hawthorne Education Foundation. <laughs> Though the name of the tournament may have changed, the cause will still stay the same. For HCTV, I'm Jennifer Murillo. To learn more about the foundation or this tournament, go to www.hawthorne.k12.ca.us. Warm weather and sunny days calls for a fun way to cool off. Hawthorne Park's waiting pools are open for summer. Families can get a chance to cool down Tuesdays through Saturdays. For more information about what Hawthorne Parks have to offer, visit Recreation and Community Services Department on the City of Hawthorne's website at www.cityofhawthorne.org. When the weather is nice, it's time to kick the outdoors into high gear. Hawthorne Recreation and Community Services Department reached for the goal with this year's first outdoor soccer clinic. Tony Long Jr. has more. Hawthorne Memorial Park was the site for Goal Time, competitive soccer skills clinic, where coaches value the dedication of students who return each year to hone their soccer skills. The most fun about working these clinics is uh, having the kids come back every year. I've had kids that start off at five and then throughout the years they come back and watching them grow is, I think it's the best for me. We just have a great facility. I've been here over years. Um, I've seen kids growing up so much that um, this is a great, great program for you to be in if you're not doing nothing this summer. Parents feel that the clinic keeps their children physically active by providing constructive playtime. Just that it's really great that parks put on these kind of activities for kids, especially over the summer. I feel like right now that they're young, um, it's good to keep them active and it keeps them off the streets and it keeps them involved in something that's good for them. The local children value this clinic for the love of the sport and being outdoors. I love soccer because it's a very fun sport and it's also how like my family bonds. We bond over soccer. It's everybody's favorite sport. The most fun is about like because last year we didn't get to go outside. We usually went inside and when we would fall we would scratch our elbows and stuff. This also marked the first time that the clinic was held in the Hawthorne futsal fields for HCTV. I'm Tony Law Jr. For more information on clinics and other classes, contact the Hawthorne Recreation and Community Services Department at 310-349-1640. Keep it right here on Channel 22 for these future City News stories. We'll take you to this year's Ramona Neighborhood Association's picnic and join us for National Night Out. That's all we have for this edition of City News. Thanks for watching. If you have any story ideas, please send us an email at hctv at hawthornca.gov. You can watch City News online on YouTube by searching Hawthorne Community Television. We'll leave you now with more footage from Good Neighbors Day. See you next time.